this teaching is on something I always got is, um, and I, it's a pl good place to be for me if we have that comfort zone or, or where I have the pieces where the thing that God is just dealing with me and things that um, God shares with me and, and where my hope comes from. And I did a teaching on that. And it's been, and I came from originally from other people and then other people have gone and really expanded on, on what it really means. Um, so every thought captive. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10.5, please. <sighs> Again, I'm, uh, good morning. I just want to make sure you can see. <laughs> I'm just, good morning. I'm just so, very, so happy to see everyone. <clears throat> so 2 Corinthians 10.5. So we are to, we are casting, we are to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So this teaching, we're going to, I'm going to go into verses that we know, we know by, we know by heart, but I'm going to have us go to every scripture and we're going to read those scriptures. We're going to see them and really it's not just hearing them, but we need to actually see them. So that's, it's important. So how are we supposed to take every thought captive? Again, I'm not speaking for everyone here. I'm speaking for myself. My thoughts within me, my thoughts are with me every day, right? When I first wake up, my thoughts are what greets me immediately in the mornings. Okay, it's like, okay, now I'm starting to think, right? Because I'm not in my deep sleep, or hopefully I'm in a deep sleep. But that's, a thought comes into my head, right? Boy, okay, I'm just going to give you an example. It's not my typical day, or f my typical morning. I still feel tired. <laughs> I should have gotten more sleep. And the, or I might feel fatigued thinking of what my day, what lies ahead, right? Because I, Bam, your, your mind starts going. It's like, okay, so there's a meaning behind this why I have to take every thought captive because that, I can go with that, right? I can become overwhelmed, right? Our jobs, because they are stressful and difficult, time restraints, time crunches, right? Getting things done as fast as we can, but doing it well. For me, uh, that's in the workplace and also in the farming, in the vineyard, stay in a step ahead, stay in a step ahead of the needs that need to be done. So as a farmer, you're being proactive, totally proactive. You're not being reactive, but you're being, you're trying to be as re, uh, proactive as you can be because you can't see down the road. So that's where a farmer has a deep, a lot, I would say in general, it has a faith in, a, in, in God. They have, they do have something. It's like Phil and I were talking about yesterday. You look at a map, you look at the agricultural area, and I think I've talked about this in the past. That's where God is actually there. God is a part of people's lives. I don't know in the depth, uh, it might be in, uh, more uh, rooted in the, in the Word of God than others, but you look at a map, and you'll swear that America still is a land that trusts in the Lord. Um, so again, staying ahead uh, of what needs to be done in the vineyard. And also my thoughts if allowed, can lead me into despair because of those things that are out of my control. Frustration, because maybe I should have done something that I didn't do, right? Or um, just doubting. Doubting, just doubt is so dangerous. So what do I do? So what do I need to do? I press into Jesus. Because there's a hope in there. I've talked about that where... You press into Jesus because that's where the hope that, that you know in your heart and that new regenerated heart that you've been given, you have that. Um, let's go to Deuteronomy 31.6. <clears throat> so again, taking every thought captive, these are the reasons why we should. I'm going to give you every re a lot of reasons why we should take every thought captive. And there's a reason, there's a person that we can go to, and we all know that. 31.6, be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. 
for the Lord your God, he it is that does go with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. Okay, we hear that. I could have just spoke it to you, but you needed to see it, okay? Because we need to really grasp what God's word is telling us. We can hear it and then walk away and we'll forget it. But we need to be in his word. We need to really examine what he's saying in just key verses. And remember that. You plant them in your mind, in your heart. Because they're in your heart. Your heart longs for, the, longs for the truth of the scriptures. Okay. So let's go to Psalm 145 now. Psalm 145, 17. And I'm going to read from 17 to 21. Everyone there? The Lord is near to all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. So He will fulfill the desire. God puts new desires into your heart. Okay, now, now everything is in... You're at peace with God. You are listening to God. And you're now you're walking in the will of God. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love Him. But all the wicked will He destroy. That is His truth. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless His holy name forever and ever. That's why, you know, the song that the last song we, we sang, okay? God, please, let this be, be something what we just read here. Let the nation's mouth shall speak of the praise of the Lord and let all flesh of this nation bless his holy name forever and ever. What an incredible thing would happen. What would take place? Um, would, it would just be amazing. It really, truly would just <laughs> shake the earth. Um, so going back to 2 Corinthians 10.5, Paul is telling us every thought I experience, okay, so every thought I experience will either aid me or weaken me or destroy me. So what does it mean to take every thought captive? God's word tells us exactly what I am to do. Go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17. <clears throat> all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly finished to all good works so God's word right God's word all scripture is given by inspiration of God that's our confidence right so God's word is our inspiration, is given by the inspiration of God. It should inspire us, and is it is profitable for doc doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So we remember these things. So these key scriptures that I'm giving you, it gives you an understanding of why we should take every thought captive, where we are to run to, where we are to put our thoughts when we have a sense of we're, we're going, to, going to a place where, where it's dangerous waters. What can cause us to slip? What can cause us to grow weary in well-doing? So God's word has been given to us in a complete way. We are equipped for every good work. God's word is what we hold up to see. Okay, so God's word is what we hold up to see if we are walking in faith or doubt taking every thought captive in obedience to Jesus Christ. It is what I must do. I must heed what God is telling me. It's, it, I know it's, it's nothing of myself, but I must heed what he's telling us. So let's go to Isaiah 43 too. So God's word says, Isaiah 43, 2, 
When you pass through the waters, God is saying, I will be with you. And though the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Nothing but goodness. Nothing of, of um, evil, which the nation should embrace these truths instead of reject them. Let's go to Psalm 77. Psalm 77, 11. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember your wonders of old. I think we've, uh, over and over and over, there's been so many teachings that, that really speak upon this key verse right here. We are to remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember your wonders of old. So taking every thought captive, where do we run? We remember your wonders of old. I remember the works of the Lord. Every time the nation of Israel went astray, it's because they forgot. And I know we, we've taught this and we've gone over and over and over it, but it's so important that God wants us to understand the only way we can take our thoughts captive is we know who God is, right? I will re remember the wonders of old. That's what this nation needs to do. This nation needs to do that. It needs to remember the days of old. It, the, where it's going that's my prayer, is that it, it, it realizes the foolishness of the path that it's on, that it's separated itself from God. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know that. But, it, but it's, it's, it's all here. It's all here on what, what, what needs to be done and what should be done because God is faithful. Let's go to Psalm 119.49. Again, take every thought captive because remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. Where does my hope come from? My hope comes from the Lord. Saying it, yeah, that sounds really good, but seeing it. We need to see it. We need to remind ourselves. I'm speaking for myself. I need to remind myself. I constantly need to remind myself. God speaks through Debbie and reminds me. Are my thoughts a help? Are my thoughts making me, or are or are my thoughts making me, or and leading me to rely upon my strength and understanding? So are are my thoughts are they a help to me, or are my thoughts making me, and are they leading me to rely upon my strength, my own strength and understanding? So I got to constantly check my heart, right? Are my thoughts causing me to, to look down a road of unknowns? So am I allowing myself to look down the road beyond I can, what I can see? And I think I see trouble, right? I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating the, the things that are possible out there because of circumstances or whatever. Is, am I doing that? Making me to forget to look unto Jesus who knows and who knows and plans all my days. So let's go to Jeremiah. I want you to read. Because we all know this scripture. But I want you all to see it. Jeremiah 29, 11. We all know this scripture. Okay? So God Almighty, why we should take our thought captive, God Almighty says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end or a hopeful end. Hopeful. Okay? So 
That's where the hope comes from. That's what he promises, is a hope in God. He knows, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end or a hopeful end. I've experienced, I've experienced that over and 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 over. And, over. Amen. Amen. and that's what I need to remember. God has been so faithful to his, to his church body. He's been faithful to the nation over and over and over, over and over and over, and over and over and over. Amen. Are my thoughts leading me to trust in my own wisdom and in my own understanding? Or are they, we're going to go to Proverbs. Again, we all know these verses, and I don't care. <laughs> Because, um, because I need to see and remind myself over, I'm speaking for myself, I need to see it over and over and over. Why I need to take every thought captive. So Proverbs 3, 5, 6, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay, so trust in the Lord with all your heart. Because what we have just already discussed already, we should because of what we discussed every already, right? Okay. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So don't lean on don't lean upon your own understanding when you wake up in the morning. Don't be thinking you got it down. Don't be thinking you got it all figured out, that you already planned it out. You got it written down already on your on your little pamphlet and stuff like that. This is how my day is gonna go. Don't go there. So, um, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I just had this thought. Okay. And I'm like, whoa, where was I going with this? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I need to do this and this and this. But acknowledge the Lord. God, I, I see this, but I'm going to check it against you. I'm going to, I'm going to come before you and say, God, is this what you want me to do today? Is this what I need to do today? It seems logical. It seems like a, a timely matter. And I'm experiencing it right now, what I'm doing, what, I, what I'm going through right now. It's like I'm thinking about spraying one more time, thinking about one more spray. I don't really need to. But um, I've, there's certain elements or there's certain things that, that have happened where I've had, I was blessed with the workers coming out and they, they dropped some fruit and they exposed some of the places that were not sprayed, right? Because they block. So is it wise for me to go back out there and spray so the bunches are completely sprayed? You see what I'm saying? So that open area that was not covered in the last spray could cause some kind of bacteria to grow. And I've had, had to experience that, right? So it's logical for me to go out there and do that. But I'm taking that thought captive, captive and I'm going, God, Amen. What, would you want me to do that? So I'm waiting right now. I really am. I'm really waiting. And should I spray tonight or should I do it tomorrow? I don't know. But I'm, I'm like, I have my ideas, but I'm not going there. I, I choose not to go there because God is faithful. I choose to remember that God is hope. God, my hope is in Him. He's faithful. And if I present everything, if I give everything to Him, Amen. He's faithful. So that's where my mind is right now. It's, it's, it's only by Him. But he's he's shown him in, he's showing he sh has shown me in his word that he is true to his word. Amen. That's where my hope is. That's where my logic comes from. That's where my understanding comes from. He is faithful if I just do what he asks. So Hebrews twelve two. <laughs> Hebrews twelve two. Verse two. So. Tell me when you get there. So Jesus says, looking, so looking to him, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our hope, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he has endured 
He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher of our hope. He's everything that, that is good. He's everything that is holy. He's everything that, that is trustworthy. He is trustworthy. And now he sits rightly at the right hand of God, Amen. the throne of God. That's my, that's my help. Amen. Oh. My help comes from there. I pray that the nation sees that. Mm -hmm. I pray our nation sees that. So when we sing that song, maybe next time or next year or whatever, it will really mean it. Mm -hmm. It will have some true meaning in the sense of a nationwide. So using his word, depending on it, for our very survival, our very lives. This is how we got to look at this too. It's our very survival is at stake. Our lives are at stake. I don't think we see it that way. I really don't. How can we know for certain that his word alone will defeat every plan from the enemy? Let's go to Isaiah 40. Forty verse eight. Tell me when you get there, please. Yeah. This is God's word. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Okay. Where we take our cap, where do we take our thoughts? This is where we should take it because His word mm. never never withers, like the grass does. His word does not fade as a flower does, but the word of God will stand forever. It will. Amen. So where do we take our thought? Unto this King. Of kings that's where we need to that's where we need to run to God help us to to recognize our weaknesses God help us to to recognize our foul thinking disgusting thinking but God help us to to humble ourselves before the king of kings and Lord of Lords Again, our battle is not against what we see and touch. Okay? This battle that we're in is not what we see and touch, as in flesh and blood, but is, in, but is taking place in a spiritual world that is fighting for our hearts. So this is what we got to understand also. There's a fight in the spiritual realm for our very hearts. Physical swords eventually get rusty and dull. So doing things in our own strength against the enemy, attempting to over, overcome our struggles by ourselves will fail us because we're, used, we're willing a physical sword in a sense. It's going to grow rusty and it's going to grow dull and we're going to get weak because we're constantly swinging. We're going we're, we're to wear out. God's word stands forever, true. It is the very weapon that will sustain us in every battle. So God's word, which is the sword that we've been given in his word, right? So he's, this is our sword right here. It's our defense. It's where we go when we're doubting, when we're, we have these thoughts of, of doubt, of rebellion, because we think we can do things in our own strength and we've got a better idea than God. God's word stands forever. It is true. It is the very weapon that will sustain us in every battle. Every battle. Every battle. 
not some. We might get to a draw here or, you know, be like, you know, well, that wasn't a victory, but, you know, we, we fought them off. Or no, we'll, every battle, we'll, every battle, every battle. There's no draws. It will complete us in every good work, his word. It shines. It is a hope upon our new hearts. That is trustworthy. Okay? It shines and is a hope upon our new hearts. God has given us a new heart. He, can, he has put within us supernaturally. It's not something that we've developed. There's a hope that we can cling to. There's a hope that we have that when we get up in the morning, yes, we have our thoughts. Yes. But now God has given that hope to our heart that we can, that he just like a light goes on. It's like, ding, I got it right here. Look at me. Look, trust me. Remember my word. Remember what we're sharing, right? What, uh, what God is sharing with us this morning. These key verses that, that we've known, we've read and, and we memorized them and stuff like that. But they're so important. They're so important. So I'm going to reread 40, uh, Isaiah 48 again. The grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God shall stand forever. That's our trust. And that is our hope. And that is what, we're, what, what sustains us. After Jesus died and rose again he, to sit on his throne, he, was made, it, he has made it possible for us to always have the precious hope that he shines upon our hearts. So after Jesus died and rose again, to go and to, after he rose again, he went to sit on the throne, right hand of the Father. He has made it possible for us to always have that precious hope that, that, that shines upon our hearts. I hope you get that. So because he sits on the throne of God, he sits in heaven, that's where our hope comes from. And it's a hope that shines into our heart. He alone made the way for us to escape hopelessness and despair no matter what our circumstances are. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 So this is why we should... Um, we are no longer bound to hopelessness or despair. We're no longer bound to the circumstances that surround us because one of the reasons 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made righteous, it made the righteousness of God in him. So I'm going to read it again. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's important that we see ourselves as God sees us. We have been given the righteousness of God. And in order to give us what... I'm sorry. In order to give us that, Jesus took on the most gruesome outcome that our thoughts could ever imagine, the wrath and anger of God. So I'm going to reread that. We have been given the righteousness of God, and in order to give us that, Jesus took on the most gruesome outcome that our thoughts could ever imagine, the wrath and anger of God that we deserved. I must... We must understand and confidently believe that I can, that we can trust the Lord no matter what. That's a supernatural thing. Amen. It's not, it's not an easy decision we can make in the flesh. It's something that is done supernaturally Amen. in that new heart that we've been given. Our struggle in this world is to trust in the one who is faithful. So our struggle in this world is to trust in the one who is faithful. So let's go to Second Corinth, uh, Second Thessalonians. Excuse me, Second Thessalonians. <coughs> Uh, 
2 Thessalonians 3 3. Tell me when you're there. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Okay. So if he says that and we know that he's true, or we say that he's true, right? We say that he is. We believe. It's, oh, yeah, you're true to your word, Lord. God says in his word, but the Lord is faithful. He says that he is faithful, who shall establish you. He's going to make it happen and keep you from evil. God is your hope. God is your protector. It's not you. It's not your plans that you've devised that's going to protect you and your family or whatever. It's, yes, you, you, God has given us a mind. God has given us an intellect to understand things and give us discernment and wisdom. But the wisdom needs to come from God. It needs to, be, it needs to come from God. Yes, for example, what I described to you about you know, farming and about my spray. I need to, okay, I need, this is what makes logical sense. I'm going to be still and know that you're God. I'm going to be still. I'm just like, I'm going to shut down in the sense. I'm going to, you are trustworthy. You have shown yourself to be trustworthy. And I need to just do. And I need to be faithful to you. Amen. Because you've shown yourself to be faithful to me. Again, do not trust in your feelings. Do not trust in my feelings. Do not, I, I need not to trust in my own fe uh, feelings. On what we perceive to be true. Again, I emphasize that. There's perception. There's perception that we all deal with. Okay? That's why we can't trust that default heart, almost. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's something that is there, right? I mean, we, um, because we all know why. But we have been given a new heart that we can trust in and believe in and have hope in. That way, that way, we should happily and joyfully surrender to Him. We should. Not easy. <laughs> you know, because we are in a fallen state in the sense of, you know, what happened with Adam and Eve and stuff like that. But we've given a new heart that we can keep pressing on, reaching for the mark, Right? We must not pretend we have the power and wisdom in our own hands. We must not pretend, okay? That goes for a lot of things, just like what Debbie and I are struggling with, with, with Michael and stuff like that. Um, someone. <laughs> because he thinks he's got it down. He's willing to take the risk. Really? Really? You're really going to take that risk? Knowing full well. Obviously, he doesn't know full well. But I think deep down, it's that he's trusting and leaning upon his own understanding. You see how easy it is to say it? And it's like, it is true, but it's like, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? This is what Jesus says. We're going to go to Revelation. Revelation 1.18. Let me know when you're there. I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forever. Amen and the keys of hell and death. Okay, so he, there's another reason why we should hold fast to him, right? I am he that lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He's sitting on the throne of God, right? The throne of the right hand of God. Amen. And have the key, he has the keys of hell and death. He has the keys to life. He has the keys to our hope. To our future. <sighs> Every thought can and must be placed in his power and strength. Let's go to Philippians. Again, we know all these, we know these verses. Philippians 4.13. I want you to guys all see it. 
because this is I love it when I when I when I look at it simple I shouldn't say simple but a very clear short verse I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me did we get that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I'm doing it and I'm biting in his will I am putting my desires I'm putting my wisdom and laying them down laying it down before his feet and waiting upon him he is going to be faithful now because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me I'm going to I'm going to have the strength and the ability now because I'm abiding in Christ that I'm in, I'm in his word uh, I'm setting aside my own strength my own wisdom my will my own discernment you might say and I'm going to be I, I'm going to be pleading with God to help me to guide me to, to yeah I'm going to take that thought captive take the thought captive do not continue down that path because you know where it's going to lead you Amen. it's not going to lead you in in uh, in being correct in the sense of righteousness it's going to it's not going to help you in the sense of of how to uh, share wisdom with anyone with anyone because you don't want it to be fleshly you don't want it to be of yourself you don't want it to be where that person is when you're talking it's like they're only seeing you you want to hear that they're actually speaking amen. speaking from God and you can feel what God is telling you amen, amen, amen. it's getting out of the way um, time spent in anxiety is useless so anxiety is something that comes out of that too right it will distract us from the hope that dwells within us. That's simple, right? We get that, right? Right? We get that? Time spent in anxiety is useless. It will distract us from the hope that dwells within us. We have to recognize there is a hope within us, that it's there available. It's available to us. And He will turn that light on. It's up to us to see it. Amen. We need to, we, or we need to, we need to like flock to it. Right? Like, I'm not saying like a moth, but a moth is, you know, goes to the light. It's like, it knows where to go. It's, I'm not comparing us to moths or anything, but. Um, so let's go to Romans 12. Romans 12, 2. Let me know when you're there. God is saying, and, not, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, we all have read this. Mm -hmm. We've all read this. But really look at this and be not conformed to this world. So don't be conformed. Don't react. Don't behave. Don't, don't think like the world does. Amen. Don't be self-sufficient. Right? That's how the world is. The world thinks it's got it down. It's, it's, I don't need God. I don't need God. I got it all down. Do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So renewing your mind, taking every thought captive. Taking every thought captive remembering relying upon that new heart that's been that's been given to you you need to cling to it it's precious that's how you got to look at it you really got to look at it that this new heart that i have this when god speaks to me this is precious i have god in heaven sitting i have, have jesus sitting on the throne right who I can rely on that you may prove or approve what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God so now you're gonna understand now you're gonna have the discernment to understand what the perfect will of God is it's not something you've made up it's not something that that is that you force God to, to fall in line with you that's what we do that's what a lot of us do I mean some of us are not I'm not saying anyone here, but that's what we do in general as people is we want God to fall in line. It's time to fall in, Lord. This is what I got to do. This is what I hope is. I've been hoping this for 20 years. 
30 years. No. King Jesus is our hope. And that's my teaching. <laughs> so I just want to close in prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for you, Lord, and help us, Lord, to remember the hope. Let us, let us um, be so sensitive to the hope that you've placed in our hearts, in our new hearts, Lord. Amen. They're always new. They're, they're, just, they're wonderful. It's something precious. It, it's just beautiful, beautifully made, no deformities, nothing. It's perfect. Amen. So God, I just pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to not fall uh, pray to our own thoughts, our own hopelessness, our own um, weaknesses, Lord, the things that we can um, do in, in, in rebellion, thinking we have it down, Lord. God, give us, give us wisdom, Lord, not to fall into that, Lord. Lord, don't let us become fools. Amen. God, and if we are, Lord, I pray that you expose it to us, God. Please, God. Expose us. Expose me. If I walk in foolishness, Lord, please, God, I beg you. I beg you. And I pray that for our nation, Lord. Lord, please, God, it, in so many ways, it's walking in, in foolishness. The country walk, walks in foolishness, thinking that it's, it's been prosperous because of its own doing. It's lost or some have forgotten the goodness, the greatness, the favor that God has had upon this nation for His glory, for missionary work, and for defeating evil in places where it's able to recognize its own evil, to recognize the things that it's been doing wrong as a nation. You've given it favor to recognize that. House divided against itself cannot stand, Abraham Lincoln quoted because he knew that the nation was under judgment. So God, you, because he sought you, he proclaimed you, he knew that judgment was at the door in the sense of nation divided forever. But where did he go? He went to you, Father. He said, I can't. It's supernatural, a hope that you gave him, that when everything seemed to be lost, when everything seemed to be divided, when you wouldn't think that it would be possible that a nation could be reunified because of the division, brother against brother, where the economies were so different, the North and the South. That's what, one of the reasons why it divided, because of the economies. Um, during, the, uh, during the Revolutionary War, the Northern colonies had industrial strength, the Southern colonies did not. Same thing. It was more agricultural, more not as the banker, the banking system was all in the north. Money was in the north. And it was hard during the revolutionary time, Lord, that the, where the colonies got together and truly knew what was best for the country. God, I call, I call to remembrance when the South was, was defeated. Lord, I, I, I call to remembrance because what I've read where there was such a pardon upon the nation of the, of the victors over the, over the defeated, where basically it was said, you, you re renounce what, what you had done previously in regards to um, slave ownership um, and, and, and fighting against the union. It was all pardoned. It was forgiven. It was done. Go home. And, and you signed an agreement saying you would never take up arms again. And that was part of the agreement. Uh, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for that. That you did not allow the country to be so fractured, so fractured, never to be put back together. Again, it shows your divine um, guidance upon this nation. God, it just seems like every generation we get so far, farther, we grow farther, farther from you, Lord. But God, let the next, let this generation that is here now, and the next generation, if that be, if that so be, Lord, 
Lord, let it call to remembrance. Let it see in the pages of your word, the pages of history, Lord, what has transpired, especially for us as a nation, and what you have done for it, and Lord, that, that it would become, that a love of gratitude would grow within us, Lord. So God, please, Lord, I just pray you teach us, show us, and continue to grow us in taking every thought captive, Amen. in obedience to the one who that is faithful, Jesus Christ. Amen.